uh, Aguato, Long Life, Acabo, welcome. Adupoi Oriegun. Um, we're continuing our series on Oriki Egun. Uh, today we're going to do take a look at two um, Oriki ones called Adimu Egun. So we, we did uh, something similar, uh, I think, on the first or second installment of this series. Uh, Adimu Egun is for when you present food to the ancestors, uh, not a uh, blood offering, but uh, prepared food like you would cook for uh, a feast for your ancestors. So the, um, the Riki for that is simple and kind of poetic. Ma Jokun, Ma Ma J Kolo, Ohun Ti Wan Ban J La Jule Orun, Niko Ma Ba Wan Fe, excuse me, Wan J Ashe. Don't eat millipedes, don't eat earthworms, but whatever good things they eat in the realm of the ancestors, eat with us now, may it be so. So, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a reference to the fact that, you know, sometimes when food is scarce, uh, bugs are cooked and eaten in palm oil, uh, not on the top of the, uh, most favorite dishes, let's say. So it's saying, uh, you know, treat your ancestors well by feeding them well is essentially the point of that. And they will support uh, your prayers in response. Uh, all right, so now we're going to go to the second Ariki we're going to talk about today. Uh, the Ariki. Uh, for welcoming the medium to public ceremony. So remember I said that uh, a gungun uh, masquerade, the invocation of possession by the masquerader usually occurs in the Egun shrine with just a very limited number of people, uh, particularly the Ato, A-T-O, who's the person who invokes uh, uh, possession. There's a couple of other jobs uh, then the egg baby have different names depending on what region you are in. One of the uh, jobs is there's a person that carries what's called an igiate. It's like a six foot bundle of uh, tree branches that are tied together. And uh, um, though the, the um, egg moon masquerade, when it comes out in public, the person with the tree branches escorts them out and kind of clears the path. It's taboo to touch the uh, dancer for two reasons. One, it, it can transfer the ashe and put the spectator in possession, which is not necessarily something that's welcome. Not because it's bad or harmful, but because it's uh, unwelcome or just not part of the process. The other thing is, if you touch a, a gungu masquerader, you can break their connection with spirit, which actually, you know, people worry about going into possession and not coming out. The truth is, altered states are very fragile and easy to break the connection. So uh, the effort is made to keep people at a distance, not to break, uh, so the connection is not broken. Also, you know, some ancestors uh, at the ancestor festivals, you know, some families have long-standing feuds with each other, and when the ancestral medium see each other, they literally uh, start wailing on each other. It's strange, but uh, uh, so there's a protective cadre of people around the ancestors also to ensure that that doesn't happen. So when we welcome the Egun, it's Awana ni jdide, Egun ni jdide, Awana ni jdide. We are the magnificent ancestors, we are the magnificent ancestors, and we are the magnificent. So, uh, you know, I mispronounced that. It's not D Day, it's Day Day. Awana ni J Day Day. Egun ni J Day Day. Awana ni J Day Day. So, because it's repeated three times, that's uh, the Ofo Ashe for uh, invoking the uh, Egun. So, you know, that'd be sung and it'd be very, it'd be sung slowly and 
melodically, it'd be like, Awanani J Day Oegoni J Day Day Awanani J Day So you'll notice I put the uh, vowel O in the Yoruba language. O is like a placekeeper. And when you're singing a Riki, O can kind of uh, help with the flow of the melody. The word O generates meaning by inflection. So there's O, 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 O. You know, all those are mm, uh, expressions of emotional content on a neutral syllable that has no specific meaning. So it's a common mechanism used in singing. So let's move to the next line here. So this, oh, excuse me, this Iriki would be spoken or sung as the uh, Egun masquerader emerges from the uh, Egun uh, shrine, literally moving from secrecy into the public or from private into the public. And so after this uh, Iriki is sung, then the uh, Ato or the uh, leader of the Egun society would uh, start singing songs that the community knows and can join in. Sometimes those songs are uh, lineage specific too, so uh, there's a really rich and wide variety of those songs. Next line, Egon ni EJ Dede Awana ni J Dede O Kung Kung Boju O Popo ni J Dede. Ancestors are the magnificent, we are the magnificent, and thick clouding Overcasting the sky is the magnus magnificent. So again, we're repeating the Ofo Ashe for possession, but we're also including the idea that uh, no matter what's going on around us, bad weather, uh, conflict, uh, disease, that, does ne that never diminishes the magnificence of the uh, arrival of the ancestor spirits. Awana ni J de de o jokun lo lo fale ne J de de. So we are the magnificent flood covering the ground is the magnificent. So again, we're reiterating the idea that no matter what the circumstances in the external environment, the the appearance of the uh, ancestral spirits through the Egungun masquerade is always considered a blessing. Awana ni J Dede, Awana ni J Dede Ashe. So again, we're repeating the Ofo Ashe. Uh, we are the magnificent, we are uh, magnificent, may it be so. So that's kind of a straightforward and um, clear Riki that expresses some uh, theological ideas. I think it's the last of the Riki Egun, so we will. Pick up the series uh, tomorrow with Oriki Ori and uh, continue our deep dive into this. Before I call it a day, um, any questions? Are we good? Okay, so it looks like everybody's clear and it's good. Uh, everybody know they're appreciated. Stay safe. We'll talk again. I'm going to do another video right after this uh, about upcoming events if you're interested. Uh, Shane.